we're uh, here at the Not So Late show. This is I'm uh, I'm a little bittersweet because this is like my second to last show. Or we're 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 hitting the uh, the last few seconds. But I have an excellent excellent cast of guests. I have here uh, my my brother, my my little brother, who will uh, punch you if you don't watch the show. He he plays football, so watch out. Uh, Danny Diaz and. Um, there he is. There he is. That, that's him. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Danny? I'm doing good. How are you? And then I have, I have, I have uh, the candidates, or I mean, I'm sorry, the current, current president, vice president, former candidates, who uh, have all the connections. They're right here. That's Nate Looney. Nate Looney. Oh, that, that there he is. And Becca Bradley, who's kind of, sort of, not in the frame, but there she is. Oh, uh, look at that. It's a, it's a lovely bunch of people. It's tax day too, so uh, don't forget mm. to uh, file your taxes, you know, because the IRS is going to go after you. These guys will go after you. No, they won't. Uh, but uh, we'll be right back after a short pause, um, and we have, we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots to talk about, so stick around. Ready? And we're back to the Not So Late Show. I have cameras all over the place. I still don't know how to talk into a camera. You'd think that after a whole year of doing this, I would have gotten the hang of it, but no, not really. But uh, I have here my pal, Danny. He's, he's mm -hmm. my brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but just don't forget that, uh, yes, it is indeed tax day today. And uh, you know, it's, it's usually chaotic. People tend to do things at the last minute. It's, it's, it's horrible. Um, and I have here, yes, I have a live report from, uh, from our senior re reporter at large, Antoinette Grajeda, who is uh, live at the Fable Post Office, where it's going to be open till midnight. Uh, it's going crazy out here, as you can see behind me, and we have some flaming, oh rolling pins of death. Some people are just freaking out about oh. this being tax day. I are mean, you they are serious? Right. Do you see what's behind me? Oh my goodness. I mean, Wait. I don't know how long I can stay out here. <laughs> this is but at the post office. Yes, oh this is the goodness. post office. As you can see, it's just what all the way it? across the street. What There's, is it there with we our go. Hansons and, and people just not filing their taxes on time. I, mean, I, on. I don't know, Jose. I guess we're just human. Oh but, my uh, goodness. Look at that. Oh! Come we on. Just, that uh, guy, that guy, he, he owes like $1,000. And that guy right there, he owes like 10 Oh, he owes way more. Oh my way god, more. this is horrible. I think things are just going to escalate until that deadline is passed and everybody's got their stuff in, or they don't, oh and if they don't, goodness. I don't know what's going to happen. This is, Antoinette, I mean, uh, can, can you tell me how much has been collected so far? I mean, how much has the IRS made? I don't know yet. I tried to speak to one representative, and he kind of got lost in the shuffle. Oh my god, really? Is he the guy that got rolled over by the fire? Or? We believe so, that was him. His remains are going to have to be gone through first. But. Really? Oh, there he is. is that, that's Dick Cheney, isn't it? He, he came here just to... Uh, <laughs> yes, just for hello. taxes here in Fayetteville. My god, well, it's, it's, it's absolute madness, so thank goodness for the, the uh, fine professionals at the media like Antoinette for covering that. Thank you, Antoinette, for that report. Uh, we'll be right back after a break. I need, I need a breather after that. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Uh, so please stick around or else the, the rolling death of fire is going to get you. No. Sports Advantage, Thursday at 9 on UATV.
And we're back to the very much college television, not so late show. Okay, so uh, we're back here. Um, we, we, we were live at the post office, and I'm back with Danny Diaz, who is president of Phi Oda Alpha. Who Salud, does not yes. want to shake my hand. I don't know why uh, my I mean, guests yeah, don't I mean, like to I shake see my you hand. every day. So. I know, I think so. I think he just like, <laughs> got tired. But no, Danny is president of the, uh, the oldest Latino fraternity, the best yes. Latino fraternity. Yes. And, uh, and I, I'm a little biased, I don't know why. But uh, Danny, uh, what, what do you do? I mean, you're president, you're, you're a busy, busy man. So tell me what, what, uh, what your daily roles are. Well, my daily roles, uh, well, first let me explain a little bit about FIOTA. Sure. Um, we are uh, the first Latino fraternity in Arkansas, as well as the nation, 1931 established. Uh, we promote cultural consciousness, uh, we promote the economical and, uh, economical and social well-being of Latinos uh, in the United States and as well we try to promote it in Latin America as well. Um, locally, uh, my, daily, uh, my daily schedule here trying to promote that has been, uh, I've been part of an outreach program, mm -hmm. uh, team with LULAC, League of the United Latin American Citizens, where we uh, are part of an outreach program where we go out to the community. And uh, we, me as uh, president of Phi Oda Alpha, I promote uh, higher education. I reach uh, Hispanic students from everywhere, from Norwest, Arkansas, from Fort Smith to Rogers, to all the way up to Monet, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been working on that lately. So I remember that. I remember mm -hmm. that, that, that the trip to Monet and mm -hmm. all, all other places that, that you can <laughs> to reach out to the Hispanic community. And, and that's, what, that's what we're all about, right? We want to empower the community through exactly. education because there's nothing And then, it. yeah, there's been a number show, the Census Bureau, where everything shows that there is a lack of Hispanic students in, in colleges. And we're trying to improve that. Um, it's, uh, we need to uh, stabilize and mobilize, have, have given the ability to mobilize in American society uh, since, especially in this area, there's been a large immigration, uh, uh, immigration uh, wave the past 10 years. I'm from mm -hmm. South, Southern Texas where the majority of people are Hispanics, but they're very assimilated, they've been there sure. for generations. They have their own, but even Texans have their own yeah. attitude. Hispanic from mm -hmm. Texans are different. Very different from here. Yeah. yeah, they hear our first generations or first time immigrants, so it's very mm -hmm. different. So I came here and it deeply affected me, uh, the change, the, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, more, a little more, more prejudice than, than where I'm from, so mm -hmm. that kind of disturbed me a little bit. So I have tried my, my best to help, help in the cost to, to end some of, some of that uh, uh, hate, sure. code words that, that are used against Hispanics. So. Yeah, and today uh, a couple of the brothers met with, uh, was it Vice Chancellor Jonetta Cross Brazil? Uh, actually, no, we met with uh, Mr. Nate Looney. Oh, the there he is, he is. The, the, yes. the, the team over there, so. Okay, and what was what was that meeting all about? Well, we just uh, uh, informed them, informed the executive team about uh, about what we do, about what I just explained here a minute ago. Uh -huh. um, uh, so Nate gets to hear this twice yeah, in one day. Yeah, he gets to hear this twice <laughs> in three hours, actually. Oh, <laughs> but uh, but what what is it that that uh, that you want the university to partner with? Do you think that there needs to be a person like more more control over who uh, who's going out there to send outreach to the community? I think there should be a more, more uh, maybe a consciousness around campus. People don't know about this mm -hmm. even. I mean, uh, we do need some support, um, so we could be stronger in this. But uh, I'm definitely looking out where we could build a program where we could do it uh, in a year, year to year basis. So that would be that would be good. That would be great. Okay. And you're gonna be back next year, right? You're, you're I'll be back my junior. senior year. Yes, I'm a junior. Yeah. So wait, <laughs> something something that that I know about you, you know, because I, I know everything about this guy. It's it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but you were a football player. <laughs> I was a football player. I uh, I transferred here from uh, St. Louis University. I played uh, Division two football there, and I tried out here. I transferred here and I tried out last fall for the football team, and I made the practice squad. But. Uh, my heart was somewhere else. It wasn't playing football no more. You know, and now, yeah, because that's, <laughs> that's the thing, like, like once, once we were going through the process, it, it was like, you know what, I don't want to play football anymore. I'm like, Danny, come on, really? And, but now I see what you're doing. You're, mm -hmm. you're very involved with uh, mm -hmm. the, your political consciousness mm -hmm. and you're trying to empower the community. So it, it makes sense. Now. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I was somewhat uh, motivated by my, my parents, my grandparents. They, uh, uh -huh. they were very politically involved in the, in the civil rights, uh, uh -huh. Hispanic civil rights in California. Uh, with so they actually knew Cesar Chavez, Chavez. And, and I actually have a picture with him. So the US they, a they boycotted, yeah, when really? I was a baby. Yeah, okay. and, uh, You're still a baby. But yeah. 
<laughs> Inside joke. Yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my nickname, Nino. But but uh, but no, the you, you met Cesar Chavez, so that means yeah, you I, had, I don't remember, but there's a picture of it. So you have to remember now. Yeah. If you, if you <laughs> but so now you're you're committed though yeah. to empowering. Not, I hope not just the Hispanic community, but just mm. everybody. Yeah, everybody. See, and also that's another thing about the fraternity. We uh, do idolize ourselves on. Pan Americanism, which means the well, originally means the unification of all Latin Americans, because there's a great division even between Hispanic sure. Americans. Uh, but I also like to implement that into all other cultures, try to unify all cultures, yeah. especially here in America. There's some divisions here between race, mm -hmm. and I do promote that too as well. Not only that, but I mean, like you said, within each, I don't know, each group. I mean, we're we're Mexican, mm -hmm. I guess. We're we're divided by a river, yeah. for example. Yeah. But even then, you know, Texas, Arkansas. Yeah, even uh, even and Texans and, and what we call Chicanos in California, they. You know, and then Puerto Ricans in New York, there's a division there. Mm -hmm. uh, Cubans in Miami, you know, they, they, there's been some conflicts. And yeah. I don't really, I, you know, I don't like that. Yeah, Maybe but. Stop that. <laughs> stop it or he'll beat you yeah. up. No, 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 no. I'll attack you. No, I think it, it's just, it, it, it's nice whenever people come together and, and yeah. work for a single cause, which I think the empowerment of the human spirit should be first mm -hmm. and foremost on anybody's agenda. But, uh, but what's your, your immediate plan for the fraternity next year? The immediate plan, well, we've been trying to get some uh, more uh, uh, sponsorships. Mm -hmm. We've gone out to uh, Walmart and uh, sponsors like that where we get a little bit more support. We're going to try to get some speakers and try to have bigger events. As uh, So far, I feel that we've done a lot in the community, but we haven't done enough on campus. So I want to get our name out on campus a little bit more. Uh, some mm -hmm. people don't know, do know about us. but. We definitely need to be more involved in campus, so I think that's going to be important for us next year. Sure. Yeah. And the uh, the new guys just uh, have have joined, right? Yeah, we just uh, have we have four new members as of Saturday, uh, so there's some good guys. So hopefully they they continue mm -hmm. the work. I think so. I think th this is a yeah. bright group of, of uh, yeah, young definitely. men, and I think we're gonna take it yeah. far. And with you and your leadership, we're gonna go very far. So Danny, thanks Senor, so much for yeah. for coming. Uh, saludos. saludos. And uh, we'll be right back with, uh, I think, another ab update later on from uh, the Fable Post Office where uh, all this <coughs> tax stuff is going on and, and the president and vice president. Uh, so stick around after the break. I'm Judy Shepard Missit, founder and CEO of Jazzercise. Join us for Jazz Cardio Strength Stretch. Each half hour program combines cardio, strength, and stretch routines for a total body workout and tips on health, nutrition, or exercise. Thousands of people have tuned in to Jazz Cardio Strength Stretch, and we hope you will too. Weekdays at 8.30 a.m. on UATV. Apparacciato la tavola? No, apparacciato la tavola. Letto un libro. Letto. Letto. No, 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 no. Oh, it was such a heartwarming film about two brothers and a boy and his father. And but they really represent sort of the neo-existentialist way of thinking. Shotgun with the body rocks, so 
And we're back to the Not So Late Show with, uh, we're coming back from the, uh, or coming back to the, the Fayetteville Post Office where people are still going crazy trying to file their text at the last minute. Uh, and we have our, our great reporter at large, Antoinette Grajeda. Uh, Antoinette, you're still there? Yes, I'm still here. I'm still here. I wrestled my stick mic away from the people that were trying to beat each other with it. But well, it looks like they're, everything's a little more civilized. Did everything, like, everybody's, look, everybody's filed in line. Everybody's like in everybody's line, they're in line, they're a little more civilized, things are a little more calm, but you never know when something else is just gonna happen. You never can tell, but. So how many people are there right now filing their tax at the last minute? There, there are hundreds of thousands, I'm certain. It looks really? like an army of people. Really? Oh yes. my goodness, see, that's, that's the thing. Like, I still don't understand why people do things at the last minute, I mean, I did my taxes. Okay, I did my taxes today too. Yeah, exactly. I'm not. I'm not out there right now because I needed to do the show, and, and the show comes first. But oh, I don't like the way this is. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Um, Antoinette, can we come back to you at the end of the show? Absolutely. I will be here reporting no matter what thank happens. Thank you. Thank you. Because I, I don't want to. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Yeah. Please kill it. No. I don't want to see what's there. Okay. So we're back here. Let's let's change the topic. We're here with the president and vice president of the Associated Student Government, uh, Nate Looney and Becca Bradley, who uh, have done an excellent year at the helm of the uh, student government. I have to say, I am uh, very impressed with you guys, Becca. Thank you. Very good Thanks job. Thanks for having us again. And Nate, appreciate you having us. Thank Jose. you for for being here. Um, this is you know I like to have these guys because I think we made a pledge last year that. Um, we wanted more uh, more transparency, I guess, in government. Let the students know what the uh, their government is doing, um, and and so I have them here again. I I I, uh, I opened the paper on on Monday, and <laughs> there you guys were talking about you know just looking back in the year. I'm like, man, it's it's been. I know, it went so fast. It, it went so fast. It it just, man, I, I can't believe it. I mean, I was interviewing you guys. Just it feels like just yesterday and now you're almost out of it. But, uh, but anyway, uh, it's good to have you guys here. Just tell me a little bit about, um, real quick for the people who don't know anything about government, what, what you guys do starting with Nate. Well, we deal with a wide variety of issues. I mean, the main purpose of student government is to represent the needs of students. And that comes from everything from student organizations to individual students to just about anything that's going on at campus. And so from a day-to-day -day basis, we're dealing with a variety of different issues. Mm -hmm. And it's always the, the concerns with, with the students. And, and Becca, you, you guys have an, an open door policy, right, for people to come in and, and voice their concerns? Absolutely. We have students come in quite frequently that come in just on a whim and we're up in the office, we talk to them, sit down. People can shoot us emails all the time. We try and be quick to respond. I don't know how good I've been about that lately. <laughs> since year's almost over, but you yeah, have a little thing called graduation coming yeah, up, little, though. Little so understandable. Uh, there's a little senioritis Some there. Some life decisions and stuff bit. like Something that. Something about what's coming up with the future, right? Ah, uh, who cares? It's 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 understandable. <laughs> um, but I mean, all in all, I mean, I'm really impressed with you guys. I think you, you both of you together have done very very good things. Uh, Nate Looney, I think I, I said this to you when I saw you this weekend, and I'll say it again. Like, if you're not the best president of ASU, you've set the the bar very very I really, I mean, and I only say that because you go to all these meetings, I've seen what you do, you're passionate about what you do, and I really hope you continue that service, like, in your professional level. Um, but let's talk a little bit about um, so, some, some of the things that, that you guys have been working on recently, like with the ASG Resolution 31, Resolution 23. Um, can you tell the, the students what happened there with those? Yeah, that's the one of the Resolution 23, the Judiciary Reform Act, mm -hmm. which you could speak more on that. Yeah, basically what HCJ reform is, and that's probably not the best thing that students want to hear about. They want to hear about something that's really exciting, but right. the HCJ Reform Act is basically restructuring the whole judicial branch to make it more of an effective body. That's something that kind of works just, just specifically within ASG, but it is a complete overhaul of an entire branch of your student government. So that's taken efforts from the administration, the staff, and students coming together since all the way from the summer to go through meeting after meeting and to talk about these changes and what it means for overall student population. And so we started back in the summer and we've just now finished it up this spring and so I'm happy to see that that's going to go into effect next fall. Sure. And that's an example of something that we've done that like Nate just mentioned, we've worked with faculty and administration and students and senators and the executive cabinet 
to, or the branch to, to accomplish something that needed to be done that was a flaw in the system. And we came together and as a body, we did it. I mean, it's all about shared governance. I mm -hmm. mean, there's not one single issue on this campus that just deals with one area of campus. I mean, mm -hmm. from parking to, you know, food in the dining areas, yeah. it deals with faculty, it deals with staff, and it deals with students. Mm -hmm. And only whenever you're working together are you going to be able to really make the decision that's, that's important to everybody. Sure. And, uh, and a little bit of poli-sci 101, you know, the stakeholders. There's so many stakeholders exactly. at the college campus, you know, you got, you got. I like that poli-sci lingo. The, the <laughs> government, uh, you know, I just read like, I opened up a book right before this, so. Uh, but you got students. You opened up a book? Yeah, for once <laughs> in my life. And then I, I decided to print something out too. A book so. and a paper in the same day? No, I, I, I don't know what, what happened. I, I, I felt inspired. Uh, I think the, the whole row week kind of relaxed me a little bit. But. <laughs> um, we all needed it. <laughs> But um, I, I'm, I lost my train of thought thinking about Row Week. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but last year, um, you know, I, I was really impressed when, when I was editor. I was really impressed with you guys' platform, to be honest. And uh, so with great uh, promises came great expectations. Uh, so we wrote a little editorial last year. Uh, it's called The Promise Ring from uh, exactly a year ago, 4 16 07. Wow. Um, and basically we just said uh, something that you guys wanted to increase communication with parking and transit to hold Senate Parking and Transit Committee more accountable. Uh, you know, and of course parking is the never-ending problem mm -hmm. on this and any other campus. But uh, you have Resolution 31 coming up in Senate. Can you explain a little bit about that and what you've done in regard to parking? Is, is, that, the, is that the Garland Avenue? That changes the, the parking, parking hours. Mm -hmm. That's something that uh, is actually not something that's, that's beneficial stance by the administration. From sure. what I've talked to from, from the different members of the administration, that's not something that's affecting students or they're in the plans right now. But what that piece of legislation calls for is that if the hours were to change in the parking deck at the union, that ASG would definitely not support it. Because you're dealing with students that they're using the union, you're dealing with students right. that are coming to the library and studying at night. And any time that you take away the parking from that area, you're pushing students to the periphery of campus, and that's just a campus safety issue. Right. So the repercussions of changing the hours move far beyond just paying for some extra parking. I mean, it's really a campus safety issue, and it's really a convenience issue for students. And yeah. so that's something that I definitely support, and, and any type of hour change is just completely unacceptable. Uh, yeah, I think so. And I remember that when I interviewed you during your vice presidential uh, debate, um, you, you said something about wanting to increase campus safety. Mm -hmm. Right, and which, that, you know, and that's what that deck at night after the hours, you know, that they are supposedly talking about changing, um, you know, that is the most lit area of campus, uh -huh. and that is the safest deck on campus. Sure. And um, just to take that away from students, both male and female, I think would be a travesty. Mm -hmm. With that said, though, the safest deck on campus, the only time I've ever had my car broken into <laughs> at all was in the middle of the afternoon last summer, I was in the office, and I get a call from UAPD that said my car has been broken into, and I, sure enough, I walk out there, and uh, everything is just strolling out everywhere. And of course, I like live out of my car. And so, of all the things they decided to take, though, they took an XM radio that they couldn't install, oh, I don't think, anywhere else. Goodness. And then my cycling shoes that you do for your bike. And so, and I think the they only reason they took. In. You can't yeah, you can't. It's not like you can just wear them out to class or something. They clip in. And so, it was frustrating because I was wanting to go get a ride in, of course. You know, uh -huh. I couldn't do that then. But, oh, my goodness. So, the safest deck may not appear to be the safest deck. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, if the president can get broken into, the average citizen can get broken into. <laughs> well, but I mean, still, the I just hope they keep the hours like they are. I mean, it's ridiculous mm -hmm. for them to to wait till like 10:30 to be able to park for free. But anyway, uh, changing subjects a little bit, changing a little bit of gears. Uh, the the thing that came on the the front page of the Traveler on Monday, you guys look back on what you did. Uh, an article by Tina Corb. I don't know how you say her Corby. last name. Well, Corby. Corby, yeah. Um, one of the things that you guys wanted to do was increase uh, awareness, you know, like what I was talking about, Danny, increasing awareness of what mm -hmm. you do is mm -hmm. good. Um, what, what have you seen advance this year as far as awareness of ASG? Well, I think one testament to awareness is just the numbers that we have seen that have increased, the applications for everything, the votes that we've seen increase. We did see, um, like as mentioned in the article, a decrease in votes for the um, Vacancy elections. Vacancy elections. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I just think that there's been a lot of interest is expressed throughout the year, and I think it's been up, and we have the numbers that show that it's been increased. Mm -hmm. yeah, and on, on that right there, that's one of our big things, being able to benchmark where we're at and where we wanted to be. 
when we made a platform last year, we weren't just throwing a bunch of ideas out of the right. paper. These are things that we really thought were going to be good for students and going to be good for ASG. Each thing under, under our big planks, we had things that we thought that could help reach those goals, almost like short-term goals. And uh, that's what we did. Our mid-year report, we sat back and we assessed the numbers empirically and said, okay, we're really doing better than what we hope to be doing at this point, sure. and we have been. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as awareness goes, applications are gone up for involvement in ASG. Uh, the, the, the number of funds requested by other RSOs across campus um, has gone up tremendously. And I mean, that's a testament to awareness. And I, I really don't know any other way you can look at it. And right. so that's, that's been one of the most important things for us is just assessing where we're at throughout the entire year. Right. And holding ourselves accountable yeah. by that mid-year report process. I uh -huh. would recommend that the next administration implement that as well mm -hmm. because, yes, we thought we were doing better and we're like, oh, these numbers look up, but be able to quantify that. Right and to actually look and say, wow, we actually did do this. Yeah, you know? I remember, and the students are caring more. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think so, because I remember when I talked to you, Nate, like I think it was December right before the, the break, you said you were, you were gonna have that empirical data pretty soon mm -hmm. showing mm -hmm. what you've been doing. And I'm glad that you had, you had a hunch that everything was doing better, and I think, I think it has. With that being said, there's still a lot of improvement to make. Oh, very you know? much so. Yeah, what well, we would, would you like, guys like to see that improvement? I well, think, oh, good. I was going to say, just in awareness, you can't be more, um, I mean, you can't increase awareness enough, basically. We're only as strong as what the students believe that we are. And only when students are coming to us like problems, uh, like Phi Alpha and mm -hmm. LULAC, and coming to us with issues, I mean, that's what makes our day, Jose. Sure. That's why we come to work in the mornings. Yeah. That's why we signed up for this in the first place. And, and it means so much to us when we can have the opportunity to make college life a little bit easier on people. Mm -hmm. And so anytime we can increase awareness and, and put people in a better place to come to us, then we're, we're being able to fulfill the reason why we took our oath of office. Well, I'm glad you guys did. Yeah. And Becca, you want to say something? I was just going to say that's another thing that we should mention is numbers don't necessarily attest to mm -hmm. awareness of what we do. It, mm -hmm. it attests the awareness that we are there. But, uh -huh. you know, like Nate said, it's groups coming in like LULAC and those other uh, people that come to us because they know what we do and they know that we can help. You know, and if nothing else, we can offer our moral support mm -hmm. and, you know, help lobby issues. And, you know, that's the thing that students need to know. They need to know that they can come to ask for appropriations committee for money. Mm -hmm. You know, not necessarily just vote in the elections. Sure. You know. So I think that's still, there's a lot of ground to be made in that yeah. area. Yeah, and I think, you know, with education, I, I'll keep saying it, education is the best way to empower. And I really want to thank you guys for helping people uh, do that. Um, so th this whole process, I think, was, was good. The, from election to seeing you guys almost leave. <laughs> I wanted to thank you guys for being on my show yeah, again. Yeah, thanks again. Uh, good it's luck wherever a, you go. We are almost out of time, but uh, I wanted to check real quick uh, for live from the Fable Post Office. Um, Antoinette, are you still there? I'm still here, Jose. I'm yes, still sir. checking this out. It's yes. still a bit of a disaster, as you can see here. What, what, what's going on back there? Um, did, did people... What, what is it? What, 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 oh, no, that's horrible. I don't want to... No. Oh, well.